All right, everybody, welcome to a special video that I've been preparing for for some time. Um, if you remember correctly, about a month ago, I want to say, I said I was making like a, a special video because I was working on a project for about two months now. I want to say I was, I've been working on this project since November, early November. So I've been involved in the Fire Emblem hacking community for a good while. Like I'm, I've been involved since 2015, I want to say, maybe 2016, but so I've made my fair share of hacks before. However, those hacks haven't really been like serious. They've just been just kind of be been me messing around with what I can do and what I can't do in the engine. So I've I got, I completed a, one of those joke hacks, I guess you can say. Not really a joke. It's just it's just a kind of like cool concept that, that I come up with. But after that, I decided I actually decided that I would actually make my first serious hack, like a serious story, and like just all out serious. So, I came up with this idea back in September. Let me turn up the volume here. There we go. I came up with this idea back in September, and it took me throughout all October to come up with the story of what I wanted it to be about. Right off the bat, I knew I wanted it to be a trilogy, like a like a real trilogy, because I. The story that I had come up with, could, there's no way it could be told throughout one game. So I wanted to, so I said, screw it, let's just make it three games to tell the whole story like that. Now, I'm not going to spoil everything, everything, because uh, whenever this, I, I complete this hack, I want you guys to experience it for yourself. So if you do want to check it out. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, uh, this hack, uh, if you guys can't tell, this hack is running on the Fire Emblem 8 engine. I chose this uh, this version of the of the game to work on because Fire Emblem 8, in my opinion, is probably the most stable and probably like honestly the engine that has the the most options for hacking Fire Emblem, in my opinion. Let me turn it down just a little bit, but uh, because there's three different engines you can use on the GBA. There's a uh, Fire Emblem 6, Fire Emblem 7, and Fire Emblem 8. I don't generally recommend to use Fire Emblem 6 because Fire Emblem 6 is uh. It's a little bit buggy, like pretty buggy. So you gotta deal with that. And then not to mention that the whole thing's in Japanese, so you need a tr you need a translation patch for that. So it's generally not recommended you hack anything Fire Emblem 6 related. Fire Emblem 7 is good. However, um, like there's no problem with Fire Emblem 7. Like at all. You can go hack it if you want to. However, there's no reason to go to it. Like there really isn't. I guess the only thing they have is like those specific kind of like... Uh, checkerboard looking player faces and enemy face icons but other than that there's really no reason why you should want to go back to it unless you just really really want to make a Fire Emblem 7 hack but Fire Emblem 8 has the most stuff you can mess with but and it's also the most stable one you can just completely go in and you really shouldn't have a problem so that's why I, that's why I chose this engine so how far am I into this hack um I am currently, I want to say, chapter... I just finished chapter 4 last night, completely. I will get started on chapter 5 as uh, quickly as possible. Obviously, I'm not going to rush through it. i got to take my time with it. But uh, whenever I do have the time, I will get started on it. Because, uh, as you know, I've been working on Hitman and other sorts of videos. The other Fire Emblem game that I've been doing a Let's Play on. Then you got Redcon. But in my spare time, I've been working on this, basically, whenever I'm free. So today, I just kind of wanted to discuss this, but also show showcase one chapter that I think will perfectly suit kind of like a like a showcase of what this hack looks like. And we'll be sh I'll be showcasing prologue two, not prologue one, because that's a little bit spoilers, and I don't want to show anything like that. So right off the bat, I'm gonna skip everything. Here we go, got a vulnerary, so you should recognize that. So let's start it off. So I'm gonna introduce. <clears throat> There's three main characters in this game. You get introduced to the first two right off the bat. Here he is, Tolu. So let me talk about the design choice that I decided to make. I wasn't really thinking about this at first when I, whenever I came up with it, but I said, should I do this or should I maybe just keep it classic? Because most Fire Emblem games they have you start off with a character that's kind of like level three ish or level. Level four, you know, kind of not, not like level one. You're never gonna find a level one lord. Um, I think Ike is the only one that starts off level one, but I can't remember. Now he does say lord, but I'm planning on changing his class name to something else because he's a mercenary. That's his. That's. 
I, he's kind of supposed to be like Ike, but not that like brave. He's just pretty smart, I guess you could say. But uh, his stats, if you look at it, they're pretty balanced for the most part. Now the the build I, was, I wanted to go with Tolu right off the bat is I wanted to make him slow but beefy, like high defense and pretty good skill. But he he gets doubled a little bit here and there. That's what I wanted to go with. And the reason I wanted to go level 1 instead of level 5, I mean not level 5, but level 4, because it was between that, it was either making him level 3, slash level 4, or level 1. And I was really thinking hard about this, but then I said, um, what if I make him level 1, but keep, keep his stats a little bit more balanced, instead of like making him low like a level 1 unit? That way you get extra room to get better stats. So I was messing around with that, because, uh, my first version of level 1 had him have lower stats, but I was like, nah, because that, that's just not fun, and it feels like a drawback, so I said, what if I gave him the stats of a level 3, but made him level 1? And that's what I went with, and it actually works pretty good. So, he does have a personal weapon, the Regal Blade. This acts like an art, like a rapier, but for Tolu specifically, since he's not a noble. He's just a mercenary. Only he can use it, it's E-Rank. It's got pretty decent stats. It's it's a little bit stronger than an iron sword, but you don't want to be using it against like you know common units. You want to use it against like armored units and horses whenever you need to. That's what that's where it's effective against. He does come with the blue gem, so you can sell that right off the bat if you need to. Gives you some gold. All right, so second main character. Here's Anna. So I'm gonna save uh, real quick this Anna. Is the Anna everybody's thinking about? It's the Anna from all the Fire Emblem games, but I wanted her to have like a bigger role in this game. See, most of the time the Annas in the other games, they're usually like uh, either like a shop, like the secret shop lady, or just kind of minor characters in the background. But I've always wondered what would a game look like if she was actually one of the main characters. So I was actually thinking very hard about this, and I think I got it to work. So <clears throat> I'm not gonna go real in depth of what. Anna's role is in here because then it's really hard to go in depth without like spoiling anything so I'm not really going to say anything but I think I got it working she does have her own unique class so just like Tolu he has his own class she has her own class and it is the duelist but I need to go back and change Tolu's to something else just the name though but uh what I want Anna to be in this game is uh she's She's going to have a little bit low defense, as you can see, but I want her to have pretty good resistance. She's going to be like a Myrmidon, basically. A Myrmidon with high resistance. That's what I want her to be. She wants. She's going to be critting a lot. That, that's the build I went for her. And I, to help out with that, I gave her a personal weapon only for her. Corvado, the, a curved sword. It's basically like a beefed up killing edge. It's not like a Wodao. It's just like, in, it's something in between a killing edge and a Wodao. So, and it's only for her. And I gave it 45 uses. Now, if I remember correctly. Uh... Yeah, so I gave uh, the Regal Blade 60 uses. I don't know if I should go back and give the her sword uh, 60 uses as well. Since this is the first chapter. Or if I should keep it that way. I really don't know. I'm, I'm going to be doing some more tests here and there. And seeing how it goes if the sword breaks too soon and i feel like i kind of need it a little bit more i'll probably go in and add another like 15 uses if i need to but for now i'm gonna keep it this way and see how it goes and then she has an iron sword and a vulnerable pretty basic i'm gonna show off her stats you know pretty pretty good better than tolu but she does have a weaker defense her affinity is water and tolu's is fire now the third unit um uh, I'm not going to go in depth with this character because uh, she's one of the characters you can deploy or not deploy if you don't want to. An archer, pretty basic. Got an iron bow. Pretty decent stats. Level 2 instead of level 1. Now with Anna, I, ma I made her level 3 because she is the main She's a main character, but I feel like uh, making her level 1 would be like too much grinding for both units at once to have two units level 1. So I decided to make her level 3. And other than that, there's a house here. I put a house right off the bat here. And there's an event on it. it. Took me a while to script that event, but we got it going. There is no boss for this chapter. This is a... I know it says Seas Gate. I need to go back in there because I'm not done. This is still an alpha. But I need to go in there and just change it to route. So this is a route chapter. Just get kill everybody. 
that's this chapter. All right, so let's go and let's get into it. All right, so let me make sure my options are. Yeah, I was messing with the game early, making sure everything was ready. So I think I will move Tolu right here, and he has access to the he. <clears throat> He has access to the supply right off the bat. And I believe so does Anna. Yeah. All the main characters, because there's three of them, will have access to the supply convoy. I don't know if I will increase this number to certain side characters that play a bigger role, or if I should just keep it to the three. I'll see how it goes. Depending on how I design my maps, if need be, I will increase it. But for now, I think I'll just keep it like this. Uh, Iron Sword. Don't want to use that other sword just yet. I can go crazy with it just because this is a demo, just to show off, but I'm going to save it just a little bit for now. Alright, so some of these guys are going to charge in. So as you can see, like I said, he gets doubled. That's the build I'm going for. I want him to be beefy, but slow. And also strong. And has like he has a lot of strength, skill, and defense, but weak uh, speed and resistance. And it doesn't double quite yet, but she will. The design I wanted to go with Anna was to make her kind of like weaker than a Myrmidon at first. But when she when you level her up, she gets stronger than a Myrmidon. And it's pretty cool. Alright, so Tola's trying to get surrounded here. Will he get doubled by this guy? No. Alright, so here's the third main character and his crew. Let's see. Alright, I'm going to skip the dialogue just to show off the gameplay only. So here's the third main character. Now this guy is a lord. So... Where's Tolu at? Yeah, so Tolu's not a lord. I just need to change that name to something else. I don't want to make just call him mercenary. I want to call him something unique. I still need to think of a name for it, though. But here's Hidolfer. He's a prince. He comes with a rapier. I basically wanted to make him kind of like Marth. Kind of a Marth build going on. You know, just like a little bit weak on strength. But pretty good skill and speed. Like really high, you know? And a little bit weak luck, weak defense, and weak resistance, but he will level that up if you put the effort into it. And obviously you should, he's the main character. Comes with the rapier, dude, that's, you know, kind of like the regal blade that I gave Tolu, but only for this guy. And he comes with a slim sword if you want to swap that out. And other than that, not really much. Here is the paladin, though, for this game. The pre-promoted guy, here's your Jagan. Kiram. So, with this guy... You'll notice that he has 38 health. I'm actually going to change this to 40 health to keep it like consistent. I don't know. I, I feel like if he has two extra health points, I feel like that would help him a little bit more. He comes with a silver sword and a steel lance. Now, the reason I didn't give him any iron weapons is because I feel like uh, Kerem is more of a... Like the steel lance, he is a little bit weak. So in this chapter... He will one-shot most things, but later on, he will quickly kind of fall off a little bit to where he's kind of a tank and just takes hits. And just equip the Steel Lancer. You can equip Iron Weapons on him later whenever you get access to the shop. And he will fulfill that, like, pre-promoted role. Just, like, taking hits and weakening, uh, whatchamacallit, softening up the enemies for you. But he does have, I gave him a Silver Sword. So if you really need to get a kill and, like, uh, everybody's too weak, he has that right off the bat. He has, uh... A rank and D rank so far. Pretty high strength. Skill's pretty decent. He can mess though later on if you're not careful. Like uh, there's enemies in woods and stuff like that. Pretty good speed. Decent luck. And I gave him pretty good defense and pretty moderate resistance. So all around, uh, all around pretty good. I need to get used to this emulator. Yeah, so all around pretty good. Give him light affinity because it uh, makes sense. And here's your healer, Lapis. So, right off the bat, one thing I wanted to do with the healers in this game is in the regular Fire Emblem games from the GBA, all the healers can't attack. They only heal. And ever since Three Houses came out and, what was it, Echoes? I think Echoes did this too. Healers could also attack, but they were a little bit weak. So, I wanted to go with that gameplay mechanic for this game because... I don't really like the fact that healers can't attack or counterattack, and they also level up so slow in this game. Now I've been playing Engage, and healers, whenever they heal, they get pretty good XP. But in this game, they barely get anything. You have to like constantly spam healing to level up pretty decent. 
But in this game, the way I fix it is just by letting them attack. However, of course, you know, to, you know, fix that, them just like, you know, like, uh, attacking and then being powerful, I give them weak magic. So they can still heal, but they won't attack that good. But they, they can at least defend themselves and get the finishing blow if they need to, to get some XP. And that's what I decided to go with. So, this isn't just like, um, whatchamacallit, a character only class. All healers in general can attack, so be careful. So she has lightning and heal. And, you know, Ian Light and Ian sta Staves. So, and here's your last character, Freya. So, she's your Cavalier. Now, honestly, I think I might end up nerfing her. She's a little bit too broken right now. You notice she's level 2, but she's got pretty good stats. She has, like, really insane good defenses. And... I might end up nerfing her, her speed just a little bit because my main problem with her is that I feel like she's doubling everything too much to the point where like no I'm not gonna nerf her speed actually I think it's the strength because the pro see, what's going on with Freya is that I'll end up attacking a unit she'll double that unit and kill him like she'll just one round a unit and that's kind of a problem because she's kind of stealing XP from the other units you know and I just kind of want to want to make everything consistent and just keep it like a team effort you could, I guess you could say she does come with an iron lance and an iron sword I just wanted to say that because you know for a level 2 unit that's way too busted so I'm definitely going to nerf probably strength uh, E and C so she's mainly a lance user but you can train her to be a sword user if you want and other than that I think that's about it so oop. let us see what we got Okay, so my open up with this. Ooh, doesn't really kill. Hmm. Totally kills this guy though. See, that's kind of what I, what I wanted to do. I just wanted to make him pretty strong, but not quick. There are no skills in this game, by the way. I did not apply the skill patch. This is more of a classic game that I made. I'm using the classic format. Is what I meant to say. Alright, so, what else? I did apply some custom patches, though, that the community has made, like, uh, the talk bubble. So, normally, whenever you talk to units in Fire Emblem games, you just kind of have to know which ones you gotta talk to, but in this game, I applied a patch that signifies which unit they can talk to, just to help you out. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna wait for those guys. Alright, so right here, I'm gonna show you guys how busted Freya is. So, you see? Just 12 damage and just doubles. That's why I'm gonna nerf her. A little bit too buff. Also, one thing I did in this game, I forgot to mention, but this is important. Every single map animation, moving animation, and battle animation is custom made. Uh, from the community, I downloaded as many as I could. I replaced all the vanilla sprites in the game with custom ones. So, if you were wondering why the game looks really, really different, that's why. Alright, so, it, I like the Paladin Sprite. Somebody made this, and it looks pretty cool. I like it. It looks more like, uh, uh, more like a classic, uh, knight than the vanilla one. The vanilla one looked kind of, it was alright, but it wasn't, like, anything to brag about. But this one looks better, in my opinion. Alright, uh, I guess I could use this guy. So, yeah, so, you, you're gonna notice this dude doesn't really kill that fast, but he... He does uh, double most of the time. I also applied it custom music to it as well. So most of the tracks are custom. There are some tracks that are still from the vanilla game. So it's not going to be what you call it, 100% custom. But I actually do plan on it being that way. I just haven't finished uh, that because there are some songs I haven't just used and needed to replace yet. But I will get to it soon. Alright, let's get rid of this guy. So you see Karen just one-shots this dude. Pretty broken, if I do say so myself. Alright. Okay, let's see. Oop, critical hit. Now you'll notice that some of the colors on the characters, I made them myself the color sprites 
I, I, I changed it myself because uh, by default they're just bluish. Because that's what the community gives you and you have to do that yourself. Which I don't mind. But some of them look pretty good and some of them kind of look meh. You'll notice. Yeah, I need to go. I'm going to go back and finish that up once I finish the game. Just to add the finishing touches. Like with Anna, it looks alright, but like not really like something like. Like I could go back and change it. That's what I want to do. Well, with Camilla, it looks really good. And Hidolfo looks amazing too. So I don't I don't think I need to go back and change theirs that much. But I think Anna won't I will need to at some point. Yeah, so look at Hidolfo. The only thing I guess I could say is that maybe his hair is a little bit too yellowish instead of blonde. So I could probably add a little bit of tint of white. Alright. My healer. Ooh. Okay, and it should be good. Yeah, that's it. She just takes, like, no damage. I think the only real threat to her would be, like, Horse Slayers or uh, Zombato. That's really the only threat she has. She's just, like, a god. That was not my intention, though. Alright. Uh, you still don't kill, though. Jeez. Oh, well, it don't matter. You crit. Ooh. You know what? Since this is a demo, I just I'm gonna just go all out just to showcase the sword. So you notice the uh, the difference between a regular sword and then her personal weapon? Twenty six percent chance to crit. Ah, you could have crit. Well, it don't matter. You would have killed him either way. All right, so. I'm going to showcase the music animation, and I mean not the music animation, the music that plays when you're healing, and the healing animation. Check this out. Pretty cool, right? It's way better than the one that was in the game originally. Like I said, it was alright, but like, a lot of the thing about Fire Emblem, the, the base game is pretty good, but like, a lot of the animations and stuff, it's just like nothing to write home about, you know? But it's pretty crazy how far the hacking community has went. They have come up with some pretty crazy stuff. <laughs> I seen somebody added Mario once in one of the one of their hacks. <laughs> I was just like, what in the world? I think I seen Kirby too once in somebody's hack. All right. Um. Let's see. All right. I need to get rid of this dude. Actually, no. I don't think I I need to. Cause I want to visit that house just to showcase it. Mm, ooh, you got hit by that. that. That was not supposed to happen. Okay, you gotta please dodge this. What? I got hit by two thirty-four percent chances. No way. I don't have a de custom death quotes yet, by the way. So those death quotes are still from the base game. I will do that later mm. all right so let me talk to this guy just to showcase you see that you know custom conversations and stuff like that Oop, let me do that Let's get rid of this archer. I swear that that archer that, that just died does not suck. She's actually pretty good. I got her. I actually got her pretty good. I'm about to promote her too. So I'm going to show off this, uh, this sequence. <laughs> Boom. Oop. So you see that she didn't really quite kill him despite him having low resistance because of her weak magic. Because that's what I was going for. Just kind of a, a good healer, a solid healer that could also counter attack if need be. Okay. So 
So you saw that enemy face and player face like little title thing that shows up every once in a while whenever the faces change. That's what I was talking about. That'd be the only reason you want to go back to Fire Emblem 7's ed engine is if you want the checkerboard style. Because that one has like a checkerboard sort of thing like whenever the player face and the enemy face show up. Because uh, some people, there are some people that don't really like the the player face and the enemy face for this game, which I don't really understand why. A lot of people do like it though, but it's just weird. Like, uh, like this one has like a, it's like where it's got like little dragon wings on the side of it. I, th I think that's what it is, and it actually looks pretty decent. Like I actually like it. It's probably one of the better ones in the series, in my opinion. But uh, some people just kind of like the checkerboard style one, I guess. I mean, I, I don't really know why, but it's a little bit basic, but I guess a lot of people, some people like it, so, I don't want to teach their own, I guess. Alright, so, let's talk to this guy. Man, that rapier is pretty good. Alright, I think that's it. I showcased everything. Let's just kill this dude. And that should be it. There was no boss for this chapter. Because it's like a... This is a mini prologue. And there we go. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, there's a little glitch I need to fix. Yep, and thus the legend begins. But I'm gonna skip all that because I don't want to spoil anything. Or show off anything story related. But, uh... I think that was about it. Now... That... I see. Honestly, other than that, I think I, I showcased everything I wanted to showcase of what, uh, it, it should give you a good idea what it looks like, my project. But, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, the cast of characters should be around the same as in the base game, but obviously they're going to be different because they're custom. This game will not have a world map. It will be linear, however, one thing I, pl I do plan on having, I actually already added it to two chapters. I plan on having a base feature, like, so every four chapters will be, you'll get into a village where it's not, not a battle chapter, but like a village chapter is what I call it, and you go in and just resupply, and just get what you need, and the Tower of Elni will be accessible from there, and you can just grind there if you need to. However, the, because of the limitations of the engine, I have to, like, you can't just, like, go into the tower and then go back to the chapter and expect the memory to remember that. So, the way I worked around it is, once you get done with the Tower of Valny, when you go back, it just replaces the chapter from the beginning, but it saves it. So, because of that, you can, I made it to where, like, you can go in there and grind. However, you're kind of grinding at your, uh... Like, you're, you're, you're giving a warning that if you grind, it'll make the game easier because you're playing the chapter and you could get certain items over and over again. Like, I'm not punishing people for grinding. I just let... I, I want people to play the way they want to play. But if you do use the Tower of Valny, you will replay the chapter and re -get some, I, regain some items from certain chapters and they will thus make the game easier. So just be aware of that. Like, uh, I think in one chapter, I'm trying to remember, you get, like... Uh, I think you get a stat booster, like a, a Draco shield, and you can, and Draco shields in this game. The way I made them, not not just Draco shields, but stat boosters in general. I made it like an Echoes. In Echoes, you got three uses out of them, and I and I honestly like that. And this game, you and in other games, you only get one use out of them. But I made it to three. So there's one village chapter where you get a Draco shield and you get three uses out of it. You know, just like I said. And if you go to the Tower of Elni, once you complete that, you go back to the chapter and it replaced the chapter scene and you get the draco shield again so that's what i mean it can, it will make the game easier if the more you abuse it so just be warned um but other than that i, th I think that's about it because i just showcased everything and i discussed everything that i was working on um I don't think the game will be coming out anytime soon just yet, depending on how it looks. I don't know, maybe it'll come out in June, maybe? I don't know. I've been working hard on this one since November, but it's still... I'm on Chapter 5 now, like I said, and it takes a lot to, like, 
get things done. You know, you got to work on the chapter, the map, the conversation, supports. I've actually worked on a couple of supports. It's not that easy because you got to come up with a pretty good topic to discuss. But I think I've got a good idea for every character. And I've actually run down a couple of them already in the game. But other than that, I think that's about it. So, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, special video. And I'll probably catch you guys back maybe Monday with Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance. Who knows? But, uh, yeah, see you guys later. Peace.